from what it is now to what it was in the past and what it could mean for the future. Join me as we explore the Sombrero Galaxy's turbulent past. You might be thinking, wait a minute, there's a place in the universe that is actually called the Sombrero Galaxy? And yes, there is. And it's just one of many incredible and odd things that have happened in the universe at large. If you're curious, the galaxy owes its name to its resemblance to the Mexican hat of the same name. It has a large central bulge and a bright nucleus, and its spiral arms pass through a thick dust lane, which is the ring encircling the central bulge. The galaxy's appearance is due to our seeing it edge on. Sombrero Galaxy is classified as an unbarred spiral galaxy and can be found in the constellation of Virgo. Its estimated distance from Earth is 29 million light years. Pierre Machin first described the Sombrero Galaxy in 1781, but it was not formally added to the Messier catalog until 140 years later in 1921. William Herschel and Charles Messier were also amongst the first astronomers to describe it. Messier had written a note about the galaxy and five other objects that he intended to add to the list of astronomical objects now called the Messier Catalogue. The French astronomer Camille Flammarion found Messier's handwritten notes about his later finds, including the Sombrero Galaxy, and added them to the list. In 1912, an American astronomer named Vesto Silfer, who was working at the Lowell Observatory, noted that the Sombrero Galaxy had a very large red shift that proved the Sombrero was very distant and outside the Milky Way. Before Silfer's discovery, astronomers had thought the Sombrero was a spiral nebula within the Milky Way. There has been a lot of research into the Sombrero Galaxy, and one of the things that has intrigued a lot of people is the fact that there is indeed a supermassive black hole at its center. This is important because it's believed that the vast majority of galaxies have a black hole at their center, so being able to see this one and study it has been a huge help to that theory. This particular black hole has been studied so much that we believe we know its mass roughly, and it's huge. Apparently, it has the mass of one billion of our suns. Researchers believe that the Sombrero's black hole is the most massive of any that have been found at the heart of a galaxy. Now, outside of its shape, you might expect that the Sombrero galaxy is nothing more than your basic run-of-the-mill type entity, but you would be wrong. The Hubble telescope has been watching the Sombrero Galaxy for a long time, and a lot of oddities have popped up via its viewing. Mainly, there are things within its odd shape that aren't consistent with basic galaxies. Hubble's sharpness and sensitivity resolves tens of thousands of individual stars in the Sombrero's vast extended halo, the region beyond a galaxy's central portion, typically made of older stars. These latest observations of the Sombrero are turning conventional theory on its head, showing only a tiny fraction of older, metal-poor stars in the halo, plus an unexpected abundance of metal-rich stars typically found only in a galaxy's disk and the central bulge. What this means is that the Sombrero galaxy is much more than we think it is, and it's got a lot of top scientists stumped as to what's going on with it and how it got to be this way in the first place. The Sombrero has always been a bit of a weird galaxy, which is what makes it so interesting," said Paul Goodfreud of the Space Telescope Science Institute STSCI, Baltimore, Maryland. Hubble's metallicity measurements, i.e. the abundance of heavy elements in the stars, are another indication that the Sombrero has a lot to teach us about galaxy assembly and evolution. Hubble's observations of the Sombrero's halo are turning our generally accepted understanding of galaxy makeup and metallicity on its head," added co-investigator Roger Cohen of the STSCI. So what are the possible theories as to how the Sombrero galaxy got to be this way? Well, one of the most logical of the bunch is that it might be the result of a merged galaxy. If you recall, the universe isn't as stable in terms of its position as you might think. Galaxies not only move around via their own orbits, but they do occasionally collide with each other. The Milky Way has done this many times before, as has the Andromeda Galaxy, which is our neighbor. And given the sometimes violent fusions of this event, it could explain some various aspects of the Sombrero Galaxy. There's just one problem with that theory. 
Mainly when a set of galaxies fuse, it tends to get very messy, and you can see the remnants of the fusion in its shape and debris. However, with the Sombrero Galaxy, it is still remarkably thin in its shape, something you wouldn't expect from a galaxy that just ate another galaxy. So as you can see, there's a lot of mystery to this galaxy that needs to be explained. Before we dive more into that past, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. In a galaxy's halo, astronomers expect to find earlier generations of stars with less heavy elements, called metals, as compared to the crowded stellar cities in the main disk of a galaxy. Elements are created through the stellar life cycle process, and the longer a galaxy has had stars going through this cycle, the more element-rich the gas and the higher metallicity the stars that form that gas. These younger high metallicity stars are typically found in the main disk of the galaxy where the stellar population is denser, or so goes the conventional wisdom. But as we've been hinting, the Sombrero Galaxy doesn't follow the conventional wisdom of the universe and galaxies as a whole, and this is in part of the reason why people are fascinated by this galaxy. Complicating the facts is the presence of many old, metal-poor globular clusters of stars. These older, metal-poor stars are expected to eventually move out of their clusters and become part of the general stellar halo. But that process seems to have been inefficient in the Sombrero Galaxy. The team compared their results with recent computer simulations to see what could be the origin of such unexpected metallicity measurements in the galaxy's halo. The results spoke to what we alluded to earlier, that the Sombrero Galaxy had somehow gone through a major event that resulted in it colliding with another galaxy and absorbing its contents into its own galaxy, which would have been fine and a logical conclusion. But again, the Sombrero Galaxy doesn't show any sign of it having the cause or the result of such a collision. By comparison, numerous interacting galaxies like the iconic Antennae Galaxies get their name from the distorted appearance of their spiral arms due to the tidal forces of their interaction. Mergers of similarly massive galaxies typically coalesce into large, smooth, elliptical galaxies with extended halos, a process that takes billions of years. But the Sombrero has never quite fit the traditional definition of either a spiral or an elliptical galaxy. It is somewhere in between, a hybrid. A hybrid that just so happens to look like a hat, but a hybrid nonetheless. So where does that leave us with our thoughts on the galaxy? Well, there's a lot to decipher, and given the unique nature of the galaxy, scientists are wanting to use all the technology that they can in order to get the best view possible of it. Which is a bit of a struggle right now with the Hubble Space Telescope, but there is hope very soon on the horizon. The research team looks forward to future observatories continuing the investigation into the Sombrero's unexpected properties. The Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope WFIRST, with a field of view 100 times that of Hubble, will be capable of capturing a continuous image of the galaxy's halo while picking up more stars in infrared light. The James Webb Space Telescope will also be valuable for its Hubble-like resolution and deeper infrared sensitivity. When it comes to studying space, you absolutely need the right tools. The Hubble Space Telescope helped give us a look at the shape of the planet and some of the stars that are causing it to be viewed differently, as well as a look at the black hole in its center. But it's not enough. These new technologies can help people observe more of the galaxy and try to answer the questions of how it got to be the shape it is, why the stars are like this and more. It's a waiting game, but it's one that could have huge dividends. Not to mention this galaxy has a lot of potential in helping us explore and understand more about other hybrid galaxies that are out there in the wider universe. You might think that the Sombrero Galaxy is a bit of an anomaly in terms of shape, but there is a lot more weird galaxies out there for us to look at and wonder how they got that way. Would you like an example? In the case of ESO 137-001, it's a galaxy that is shaped like a jellyfish. No, really, the spiral form of the galaxy is still there, but it also has a tail that is formed by stars that are in its wake, if you will, 
and it's quite a tail as it extends over 260,000 light years into space. The newly forming stars in the tail are mysterious because processes common in large groups of galaxies should make it difficult for new stars to emerge. Most galaxies live in groups. For example, the Milky Way is a member of the local group, which also contains galaxies like Andromeda and the Triangulum Spiral. Some galaxies reside in much larger gatherings of hundreds or even thousands of galaxies known as a galaxy cluster. But that's not what's happening here, and that's what makes it all the more weird and strange. Both gas and dust are getting stripped off, but how much and what happens to the stripped material and the galaxy itself are still open questions," said Stacy Alberts of the University of Arizona, a co-investigator on the project. Researchers aren't sure how stars are able to form at all within the tail since the stripping process should have heated the gas. We think it's hard to strip off a molecular cloud that's already forming stars because it should be tightly bound to the galaxy by gravity, which means either we're wrong or this gas got stripped off and heated up but then had to cool again so that it could condense and form stars," explains Alberts. Or if you want one that's really out there in terms of shape, how about ESO 381-12? Not only is this galaxy one that is growing, it's growing in a way and in a shape that is truly baffling scientists. How so? Well, it looks like a flower in bloom and the petals, as they are known, aren't symmetrical. Not only does this cause a very visual thing, it causes a mystery because no one is quite sure how they formed, why they look like that, and how the stars within them technically work. There are theories as to what they are, including being shock waves that were shown via the images of the galaxy, with the shock waves coming from the collision of galaxies that this one potentially had. But no one is really sure if that is a real thing. So as you can see, there are many hybrid galaxies out there that buck the trend in terms of what they are like and how they are shaped, and thus we need to study ones like the Sombrero Galaxy in order to further understand how galaxies can form in this way. Because right now, we have no true idea of how it all works, and that makes it all the more strange and curious. That being said, if you wanted to help take part in the research of the Sombrero Galaxy, you honestly can. The Sombrero Galaxy has an apparent magnitude, brightness, of around 9.0 and can therefore be easily seen with ordinary telescopes. On a dark night, people can even see the Sombrero Galaxy through ordinary binoculars. It can be seen during the spring and early summer between the constellations Corvus and Virgo. Researchers estimate that the Sombrero Galaxy has at least 100 stars for every human on Earth, and there are over 7 billion on our planet currently. What's more, there may be up to 2,000 globular clusters in the galaxy's core, which is about 10 times the number of clusters in the Milky Way galaxy. As with the Milky Way, the Sombrero's globular clusters are thought to be between 10 and 13 billion years old. So as you can see, there is a lot to observe with the Sombrero galaxy, and it has the age to be one that has been around since near the beginning of the universe. And that may just be the reason that scientists want to study it so much. Because if we can figure out the mysteries of this particular galaxy, then more than likely we can figure out a lot more about the shapes of others. Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of this look at the Sombrero Galaxy and its unique shape? Do you think that its past was full of collisions with other galaxies and that this was how it got its shape? Or do you think there's another explanation as to how it became what it is today? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.